Good morning, and welcome to The Angry Astronaut, a very grim morning uh, that the UK woke up to today, at least for those who are space flight enthusiasts, and there is no other way for me to spin what happened uh, in the early morning hours um, off the southern coast of Ireland um, as Virgin Orbit attempted its first launch from European soil, indeed the first ever commercial orbital launch from Western Europe period. This was an historic event, no matter which way you look at it. But still, if you expect that I'm going to say that space is hard and, you know, a lot of important things were learned, that a great deal of progress was made, etc., etc., and we just need to try again. Well, those of you who are familiar with my channel know that I don't do things that way. I like to examine the long-term consequences and the full spectrum of ramifications of what a failure might mean to the future of a program. And the fact of the matter is, what happened in the early morning hours today is something that could have ramifications for all of UK spaceflight and much more so for Virgin Orbit. That having been said, however, it is also extremely important that regardless of the consequences and regardless of how difficult it may prove to be to come back from what has just happened, it is absolutely vital that the UK remains calm and carries on. And that's why I'm wearing this t-shirt right now to express my solidarity with the people of the United Kingdom and especially the people who have been so heavily involved in this project for so long. I know how disappointing it was for me to watch what happened last night after the amount of time that I spent having made two trips to the United Kingdom, developing this relationship over the last two years, and spending more than 12 hours in the freezing cold, but that is nothing compared to the level of disappointment that the people at Spaceport Cornwall no doubt felt because of what happened. Once again, to reiterate, what happened today, in the early morning hours, was significant, and it does have significant and serious ramifications and implications for the future of British spaceflight and especially for Virgin Orbit. But it is also of vital importance that Britain and Virgin Orbit pressed forward regardless. And I'm going to explain why all of this is true in just a moment. Here we go. Engines powering up. Here we go. Here we go. Cosmic Girl. Getting ready to take flight at this moment. Go, 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 baby. Go! Yeah! Woo! It was a night of incredible highs and devastating lows. After waiting more than 12 hours in chilling wind, rain, sleet, hail, and all kinds of other unpleasantness, it was a feeling of vindication when Cosmic Girl finally took flight. And it was so exciting for such a significant period of time. Everything about the launch seemed to be going flawlessly. As a matter of fact, the rocket was released earlier than it was released in the Tubular Bells mission, which I had an opportunity to observe while I was in Mojave. So everything seemed to be extremely routine. Indeed, the first stage of Launcher 1 appeared to perform perfectly, but what happened after that was anything but perfect. 
Although an investigation that is likely to take many days is still in progress about exactly what happened, it is obvious that the Newton 4 engine on the second stage did not perform as expected. It did light. However, according to sources close to Virgin Orbit, it did not burn for the expected period of time, and it also didn't perform as designed. It didn't seem to produce enough thrust in order to accomplish its objectives or even enough to achieve the necessary altitude before it cut off. And of course, another berm was going to be required in order to carry out orbital insertion, but it would appear that the performance during the first burn of Newton 4 already sealed the fate of the Start Me Up mission. Sharp-eyed observers noticed a strange gimbling of the Newton 4 engine as it attempted to cre uh, correct its trajectory, but once again, all of these things are speculation and only things that were observed, not something that's been confirmed by the Virgin Orbit investigation at all. However, my money is definitely on a flaw in the engine and not a flaw in the avionics or some other part of the rock. It. Engine failures are the bane of so many launch providers, and it appears that Virgin Orbit has fallen victim to this as well. Of course, it is worth mentioning that these sorts of things happen all the time. They happen to SpaceX several times with their first Falcon 1 experiments, and it came very close to bankrupting the company. However, as we all know, SpaceX powered through those challenges and emerged to become the pre eminent launch provider in the world. Is that what's going to happen here, though? Well, there are a number of unique problems that Virgin Orbit is facing right now. Virgin Orbit's financial situation was not ideal even before this anomaly happened, and in addition to that, their stock prices are incredibly low, and the amount of cash flow that they have at their disposal is also reduced. Nevertheless, they did receive another $20 million infusion of cash Cash three weeks ago, and that is going to be a very important development. However, the financial analyst called Seeking Alpha had this to say about the anomaly, quote, the payloads on board are expensive, so mission failure is expensive. Furthermore, analysis should point out the cause of failure, and that might delay other missions. So mission failure should not be taken lightly, as it could delay other launches scheduled. For 2023, a total of seven launches are scheduled, and I could imagine that until the root cause of the mission failure is determined, those launches might be on hold. But why is the fate of Virgin Orbit so important to the future of Spaceport Cornwall? Well, for one important reason. Spaceport Cornwall is a horizontal launch facility, and Virgin Orbit is the preeminent horizontal launch provider on the planet. As a matter of fact, there really isn't any other viable horizontal launch providers, at least not currently. And unfortunately, the news gets worse from there. Virgin Orbit's primary selling point, at least for the future, was the claim that they would be able to launch satellites for a variety of countries all over the planet, anytime, anywhere, as long as you had a runway and facilities capable of handling their system. The relatively simple and inexpensive infrastructure necessary to build a spaceport that Virgin Orbit can make use of was one of the big selling points of this whole system. However, if you have a danger of losing your payload by going with this kind of solution, that may prove to be a serious turnoff for a variety of customers in Europe and elsewhere. So even if Virgin Orbit manages to carry out a number of successful missions out of Mojave, there could be a perception that they really aren't capable of carrying out missions in other countries, at least not as capable as they claim to be, because after all, they had many months to prepare for this mission to make sure that everything was right with Launcher 1, and yet they still experienced an anomaly. 
that being the case, how can they really legitimately sell the concept of rapid response and rapid deployment of satellites anywhere on the planet? And unfortunately, this is a state of affairs that is likely to spill over into the UK's vertical launch solutions as well, because the launch providers that are going to be launching out of Saxavord, for example, are new emerging startups who are likely to experience at least one or two anomalies with their first missions. ABL out of the United States, Astra, who has already experienced many anomalies, also Rocket Factory Augs, High Impulse, all of these companies have yet to carry out a single successful orbital mission. Well, okay, Astra has, but in the face of lots of failures, so I wouldn't say that they are a huge feather in the cap of the future of Saxavord. This morning's anomaly may have communicated a very grim fact to satellite manufacturers across Europe. Yes, it may be easier to try to ship your satellites to a nearby spaceport in Europe as opposed to shipping it across the Atlantic. Yes, it may be less expensive to go with these solutions. Yes, you may be able to launch a lot sooner, which will be better for your mission overall. And yes, you may be able to launch to the exact orbit that you want to. But if you lose the payload, then all of those advantages simply evaporate. And if you just went with a SpaceX ride, share mission, which these days has practically a 100% chance of success, well, isn't that a better solution? So why would you go with a homegrown provider? And then there's going to be the detractors, the people who argue that during a time of a recession, the UK really need not be spending millions of pounds on a risky industry like spaceflight. There's going to be the environmentalists who are going to say that this morning's mission produced a large amount of greenhouse gases. It didn't, but they're going to say that without any benefit being delivered to the human race. Why would we want to repeat something like that. So lots of negatives that really aren't being very freely talked about. However, now that I've said all of these things, I also need to emphasize one really important fact. Britain must push forward regardless, and so must Virgin Orbit. Virgin Orbit needs to return to Britain as soon as possible. Virgin Orbit needs to deliver for these customers who lost their payloads this morning, Virgin Orbit needs to prove that they can launch from Britain before they can think about launching from Australia, before they can think about launching from Brazil, Japan, or any place else. Virgin Orbit's advantage of horizontal launch, the main selling points of their company, need to be proven decisively if they're going to move forward, and that's not going to be accomplished if they stay in Mojave. They must return to Britain, and Britain must encourage them to return. Now speaking as an American spaceflight enthusiast, I can assure you and most of you would agree that anomalies are part of this business. They happen all the time. However, given all the reasons I've just listed, this was a really lousy time for an anomaly to happen with Virgin Orbit in Spaceport Cornwall. However, there's also some good news that needs to be taken away from this. As near as we can tell, Spaceport Cornwall did everything that they were supposed to do. All of the facilities and all of the expertise that Virgin Orbit needed not only to land and take off from Britain, but also to integrate all the payloads into Launcher 1, all of those things were done properly. Spaceport Cornwall delivered on its mission, at least as far as we know right now. That being the case, Spaceport Cornwall unquestionably knows how to handle a space mission, and that's something that's going to be very important for the future, especially if we're talking about Sierra Space and other companies that are going to be operating out of this spaceport as well. So the bottom line is this. Were there lots of consequences as a result of what happened with this morning's anomaly? Yes. Is this going to create a challenging environment for the UK to recover from? Yes. Is the UK capable of recovering from all of this? Absolutely, if they have the will. 
Smash that like, hit that subscribe, please check the description for various ways to support my content, and as always, stay angry about space!